Alhamdulillah that the ocean and mercy of Allah and its manifestation in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad is all grace and majesty of Allah's reality is manifesting by the arrival and the presence and the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad that every hadith of Sayyidina Muhammad is an ocean of reality that is a safety for us when we contemplate and understand that on this hadith Sayyidina Hudayfa reported that the Messenger of Allah peace and blessings be upon him, I surely know what the false the Dajjal will have with him. He will have two flowing rivers, one that appears to be clear water and another that appears to be a blazing fire. If one of you sees that, let him go to the river of fire, lower his gaze, lower his head and to drink from it for it will be cool water. And for the Dajjal has one covered eye, one thick skin over it and written between his foreheads Kafahra, unbeliever kafir. Every believer will be able to read it whether he is literate or not, it will be visible from the power of their heart. He will have a paradise and a fire with him. His fire is paradise and his paradise is hellfire. <clears throat> the depth of that reality that we're facing in a time of Dajjal and a time of immense difficulty and the reality of these holy nights of the great Siddiqs, the great Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq al-Mutlaq, the truthful servant of Allah to guide as a mercy for humanity, the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad that the depth of what Prophet is teaching for us that in this time of great deceit where you would not have not even seen him but the presence of his, his nation and his system that is in place and that system is about presenting a fire and that fire is to be feared. And then presenting a coolness and a relief, a clean water means that everything in our life and we've talked from the times of seclusion and the reality of seclusion, the reality of spiritual training. What this warning is for us is the fire represents every type of difficulty and that He's warning that these fires will be present to you. And because you'll fear them because that's the concept of the, the fire and the coolness that he'll present something of a fiery nature people will run from it scared to death of it and then he'll provide a solution and people will run to the solution thinking that's their relief, that's their cure, that's their system that is going to save them from the fire he's showing. So that'll be in every aspect of our life. So through his system and what he controls and we have to be, we can't be too direct. So people out there should be using their intellect to understand because if you're too direct they cut your channel off. The system that he presents is a system of fear. If you enter into that fear and you say, oh my God I'm going to burn with every aspect of every sickness, every difficulty, every rizq, whatever it is, if you buy into his fear and as a result of that fear you run towards his relief, what happened then? It's a hellfire. So every difficulty that in this Dajjal time that is presented to us and you begin to say, my goodness, oh wow, look at that. 
he presents a fire and a difficulty or whatever sickness, whatever it is, use your cleverness but says, here's a relief. And this was the warning, coolness of water doesn't mean you only drink the water, it means whatever relief from this fire is from dajjal. And Prophet ﷺ's warning is, enter the fire, don't worry about his relief, he has no relief. His relief is actually the one that's killing you. The fire is not something to be feared. Right? That's why Ayatul Kareem called Ya Nahru, say to the fire, Kuni bardan wa salaman ala Ibrahim. That fire that you're looking at, you're asking Allah make it to be something cool and peaceful for me Ya Rabbi. So means what? This is a psychological warfare. Who controls the mind will alter the heart. Nobody can tell us that they're strong enough to take it through the mind and everything will be okay. Doesn't work that way. If what you take through your mind and you listen to it, you believe in it, you run to go get tested for it, your mind is now going to be altered. As a result of your mind being poisoned and fearful and, oh my God, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, you will begin to manifest its fire and you begin to run towards its relief of what Dajjal is presenting as a relief, which is the real fire that you ingest and put upon yourself is the real fire. So you present something scary but only for the reason of giving this. That's why it was presented as something scary. So everything in life will be presented as a situation and he'll be offering a remedy. That's what it means and it's from one of its understandings of a fire in front of you and he's providing a cool relief. You think Dajjal's uh, relief is going to be of any, any importance? So it's then a war onto the mind of people. And if the mind can be controlled and manipulated, the heart's faith can be destroyed as what they call psychosomatic sicknesses and difficulties. It's very real, it's not something that psychologists learn in school because they don't truly believe the true extent. But once in seclusions and trainings you understand what's happening. We've described before that in seclusion they train you that you sit down all of a sudden you're going to be presented with an attack. That through your meditation, your training and all of a sudden a room fills with rats, very real. Because you're now in a spiritual realm and as a result they've controlled now your eyes, your ears, your sense of touch through your brain. Because one whom is messing with your brain has a sense of your realities, see? So spiritually you see it, you may spiritually begin to hear the ruffling of this creature and then they can control the senses so that when they come close you actually begin to feel the feet running all over you. So that training was then, they're in their zikr, they're contemplating, they're doing their madad and their connection. At this level of strong belief and strong connection, the fires of the shaykh is telling them, pay no attention to that fire, that difficulty. Because some people are not putting these examples applicable to everyday life. They say, oh if I see a fire okay and Dajjal tell me that's a fire I will run into it. No, his system is presenting a fire in every aspect of life right now. And people are fearful of that fire and running to what he calls is a solution. That solution is the actual fire that's killing people and will kill people. 
And what Prophet is teaching for us as a mercy, don't be scared of that fire. For the believer it's not a fire, enter into it. There is no way of leaving it but as soon as you enter into that it's just the cold for you. Don't let your mind tell you it's anything different. Whatever the difficulty is in life it's just normal every day. Allah's with me, although I walk through the valley of death I fear not for my Lord is with me. All their books say the same, Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakeel, ni'mal mawla wa ni'mal nasee, la hawla wa la quwwat illa billahi alil adheem. It's not a phrase and expression we use but this is a time of belief, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, amanu. The, the ones who don't believe they're going to be lost anyways. But Allah is saying, for those who believe, now believe more because now the Siddiqs and those who follow their way are teaching. Your belief and your certainty through the guidance of awliyaullah is they'll teach you, shut your head off. Believe, don't go a step further into your mind, don't say, I just want to know, you don't need to know because when the Dajjal enter into your head. He has entered, when he enters into the head he will contaminate and poison the mind. So if somebody come and tell you, again we'll use matrix for those who don't know religious books, he took him to the roof and this is spiritual training and he tells him, jump over to the other building. He said, how am I going to jump, I'm going to fall. Say, said, Yahoo, didn't we say this is all fake? Anyways, what are you scared of? Jump! Means that you're using your physical mind in a spiritual reality you've already lost. So the training in all of this is that my, my condition is good, my connection is good, energy is good. Don't listen to these titles he's giving, don't listen to these difficulties he's giving, it's an everyday occurrence. You blow your nose, you take your vitamins, you take the meds that the, the, the Naqshbandi teachers are giving and, and the Naqshbandi doctors are giving, they're giving their advice based on their spiritual connection and you proceed with your life. You do all your zikrs, your ta'weez, your wudu and all your practices and it becomes a training. For if you enter into the mind and the psyche of what Dajjal is putting, he will control the heart of people. And through their fear they'll begin to make irrational decisions based on fear. And that is what that system of Jahannam is because it's a hell and a burning. As soon as they enter into that they can't get out of it and they become sicker and sicker and more and more into difficulty. And that's just one aspect of what's happening now upon this earth. The reality of the hadith is that this is a battle for that mind. That of anything that coming to you a fear of difficulty of, of these situations that an immense amount of faith is required with an immense amount of connection. So that the connection is there, the energy is there, their spiritual practices are there and that not to enter into a state of fear. And that's, that's an immense reality and that's an immense reality of of when the mind becomes contaminated and enters and begins to panic, begins to fear, begins to have all sorts of anxieties, that is that system. Means that Dajjal has entered into the mind of that person and that's impossible to reverse, very difficult to reverse. That's why the training that when they were under attack that the shaykh is teaching to them, keep your connections, keep your energy, pay no attention to that. And now with your heart reverse it, that it is not a, an attack of ran, rats, that they're just angels and they're brushing their wings all over you. So they've been taught on how to fight with their heart and their mind. And that's why every tariqah's first zikr is, La ilaha illallah, La means no. It's negation, no head, ilaha illallah and then means you're bringing the light. There is no head and only light into my heart of Allah, there is nothing but Allah, nothing to fear but Allah. 
Nothing can reach you but Allah, nothing can help you but Allah, nothing can harm you but Allah. Zaid, when the yaqeen is strengthened and these are little tests coming for bigger events. So Grand Shaykh said that an event would come in which the believer would look out and see a, an atomic explosion. Oh, of course everybody then is completely going to be convinced that they're finished, it's over, they're kebab, they're charcoaled. And he said, no the believer at that time will take an onion because of whatever antibodies or whatever reality it has in it and it could be something that you don't think anything of but it may have a secret of faith. Because you believed in the kalam of awliya and they said to do that they'll put a jinn over you to protect you from any type of energy. And you go into sujood, you breathe from that and Allah has a kingdom in which to shield the believer if he wants. But it's not for your mind to think, no I scientifically know that is going to burn me. That we are beyond science, this has nothing to do, their science knows nothing of Allah's kingdom. This is way outside of that realm. Sometimes the kingdom can explain their small understanding of science. But if science becomes your belief and faith is lost within the heart, already the dajjal system has conquered that person. So these days uh, difficulties are coming, immense hardships are coming and the first zikr of every tariqah was for the preparation of these days and the preparation for the release of the soul. That la to your head, illaha illallah and the movement there is nothing but Allah and the power of that light within the heart. Means that the heart and the head are an extreme battle. Anyone who takes the teaching and moves it to their head, rationalizes and says, no this one I wanted to know about, maybe this one let me research about, already the nafs has entered into that teaching, has contaminated and polluted that understanding and stops it from entering pure and clean within the heart. So it's an immense difficulty, that's why then the tafakkur, the contemplation, the meditations are so powerful. But how can you meditate, how can you save yourself, how can you get guidance if you have not established that connection? Means that channel and that broadcasting is a heavenly channel, an encrypted, heavenly encrypted channel that nobody can crack it because its code is with Allah Not a shaitan, not a jinn, nobody can crack the encrypted code that coming from Divinely Presence. And, and Allah says, many have tried, they sit up high where the amr is coming and they try to take a listen to what the command and Allah send the shihab the angels with a fire and hit them when they go up high to hear the command. But there's no way for them to enter into an encrypted signal within the heart. And that's why we said with these practices, with the meditation, the tafakkur, the, the reliance upon Allah the love and the reliance upon Sayyidina Muhammad Fa'matiullah, obey Allah, atiya Rasul, obey Prophet with the immensity of this immense love Wa ulur amri minkum and then we'll begin to understand that the ulur am they are carrying the commands of Sayyidina Muhammad upon this earth. When we are with them, listen to them, obey what their teachings are and practice in this world of certainty the energy and encrypted signal begin, begins to flow within the heart. So that to safeguard from these events. So that when a fire is presented in our daily life and that's why you turn on the box and these news channels are only about the fire. They don't have any relief, it's the fire and the poisonous thing that they're trying for people to be pushed to. The fire and their relief, the fire and their relief. And what Prophet said, go for the fire. Because if you should take their relief it's a jahannam, it's a, it's a hell for you and a hell for what's going to happen. Why? 
Well, because we don't know what's happening inside the body, what type of characteristics will be altered by these, what type of energies and, and negativities will become. And can you imagine if it begins to alter the personality and alter the characteristics so that they become narani and then their last days on this earth will be all jahannami. Every type of horrific action people may begin to do and they become altered in their character and their personalities. And that's what Prophet described that it's hellfire, it's going to take away your humanity and something else will be put in its place that will be a ticket to Jahannam. Take the fire, put your head down, why? Because your nazar bar qadam, why put your head down? Keep your eyes on your feet, means these are for instructions for the turuqs. That your students who have been taught, don't look left and right. Don't try to analyze with your head, your head doesn't have the capacity of their heart. That just look down, follow their guidance and go into that fire. And that's the example that they taught from Mawlana Sharafuddin. He's surrounded by you know thousands of people but they're not going to believe, they're going to get everybody killed because they don't believe. So he said, oh the enemies are attacking Mawlana, what are we going to do? He said, plant your seeds. Oh this Mawlana he lost his mind stuff a lot, let's get out of here, he doesn't know what he's doing. That was good, let them leave. Because they didn't believe anyways and they're going to get everybody hurt with their disbelief by yelling and screaming and arguing the whole time. So when people leave, it's not your business, it's actually a, a ni'mat from Allah. Because last thing you need in time of difficulty, screaming, yelling, doubting people who only want to make problems for you. So they left, when they all left they said, Muhammad what do we do? He said, keep planting. Now that you're planting come here. He brought water for the community and began to recite from Surat Al Yaseen upon that water, drink from this water, we're going to walk now. They walked off from, from the, the Caucasus all the way to Rashidiyah in Turkey where we went to visit and they said that the Kozak's armies were shooting left and right, left and right, anything in the, in the forest they, they were shooting. If a bird moved, if a squirrel moved, anything that moved they were shooting. And Mawlana Sharafuddin Sultan and Awliya walked with his people through all the brushes and everything, not a single word from their mouth but they were making footsteps so I'm sure everybody could hear but Allah didn't want them to hear because Allah wrote the program. So with their yaqeen and their certainty and their belief in the way they didn't question, they didn't ask, they just believed. That level of belief they walk safe, not one person shot, not one person harmed. It's not a time for fighting if anyone's listening and say, oh are these people going to fight? No. The people who fight let them kill each other. This is about not being visible, not being in, involved with dajjal and the fitna of what dajjal is bringing upon the earth. But to lose your visibility to the inhabitants of earth require an extreme amount of faith in which what you recite has a power, in which what you recite veils you from their satanic plan and their satanic ordinance and coordinates. Not to use your head, so inshaAllah Allah dress us and bless us from the reality of this holy hadith of Sayyidina Muhammad as a safety for us. That every fire that presented by the Dajjal system know that there's a paradise in that reality and not to be feared. But it requires a strength within the heart not to question, not to let your mind enter into its fear and even to drink and to taste from its fear because once the fear comes in it's a poison that can never be taken out. So anyone who thinks that they can deal with a little bit of the fear I just want to know you're wrong, you don't understand what shaykhs are teaching. If you taste from the fear you can't take it out of you. You imagine like it's an ifrit because everyone needs like an example, I don't know what you're talking about. Imagine like you put a little devil, he's a fear, you say, I'm just going to bite this devil's foot. Uh, well now he's in you 
and he re- replicates and multiplies himself within you. So what Allah said for those whom believe and whom are in have a love and proximity neither they fear nor grieve. Why no fear nor grief? Because they abstain from that reality and Allah secures and fortifies their heart that don't bring fear into this because the yaqeen, the certainty of your love and your connection with the Divine is the opposite of fear. Faith is opposite than fear, fear is the opposite of faith and anger. So when the faith is strong, the love and the connection is strong. Something comes to you, Allah loves me, it's nothing, blow your nose, take your vitamins, go on. You can't breathe, take something for your breath and take it, inhale it, don't you think about it. But if shaitan start chewing in your head and make everything psychosomatic into your heart, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die. And then we talked about the talks on manifestation. If you think you're gonna die, you're going to make yourself with all your power to begin to die. Because you begin to tox, put the toxin within your body, you begin to make every condition and deteriorate every condition within your physicality. And shaitan knows your power, that was the talks from manifestation. When he knows your power, it can come into your head, begin to plant his suggestion that you use your power. Shaitan has no power. What is Allah's phrase, La hawla wa la quwwata, Allah is saying if you believe in Allah, Allah is saying, there is no power and there's no help except me. So He doesn't have power, He only can suggest to your power because you're the loved ones of Allah wa lakal karam because Allah loves you. He gave us a lot of power so He suggests within your power you're sick, you're this, you're that and as a result you believe it, you manifest it and it goes out of control. Your anxiety, your, your manifestations, your depressions and everything. So that was in the talks of manifestation how, how what we think will actually manifest. And that's why all the Prophets were teaching, think from Allah's love, think that Allah has the power. And though even you walk in a valley of death, nothing can come to you. If you think that, Allah manifests that. On how Allah wants to manifest it, that's Allah's business, not ours. Whom He sends to guard the servant, what He sends to guard the servant. And if you believe these are the last days, that was the other talk on manifestation. Do good, do a lot of good and a lot of good very fast. While you're trying to amass fortunes for real estate and nef- NFTs and Bitcoins and all these things, time is out. But do good and do a lot of good quickly so that you manifest that person that Prophet described. Everyone will take somebody into the grave with them and it's your deeds. So when they're teaching you all these difficulties are coming, <clears throat> all these illusions will begin to appear then what is your safeguard? You meditate, you contemplate and then why then they have all these programs to do good? Because as soon as you're doing good, doing good, doing good, there's a being that's manifesting right in front of you and sending his light upon you. Your good actions manifest like a soldier from heaven, a knight, fully knighted and begin to dress upon you faith. Every prayer you be making with that servant is making it at a purified station back upon your soul and granting you more spiritual power, more yaqeen and more certainty. Means that's the secret of your power of manifestation. Instead of manifesting the fear and then going down, they're teaching us, pay no attention to that, the only power is in Allah do everything you can to be good and to do good. And that goodness is a righteous servant that begins to appear right in front of you, knighted from the heavens because these are times of immense difficulty opening. As a result every du'a you make, that servant makes it at a thousand times more power because of the purity of that reality. 
and begin to dress you and dress you. We say even the secret of everything we do is in the idah. Everything you do give it as a gift to the holy soul of Sayyidina Muhammad and holy companions Ahlul Bayt and all our shaykhs, name them, don't be, don't be cheap in leaving somebody out because you don't know which one has what secret to send back to you. So when you give your gift you're supposed to receive a gift, right? Why you give a gift to the shaykh every time you see him? Because his du'a will be a gift to you. But imagine you pray and you say, Ya Rabbi if anything was good in what I just did please give it as a gift to the holy soul of Sayyidina Muhammad and the holy companions Ahlul Bayt and my shaykhs. Because they'll take that light, multiply its reality from the immensity of their stations and say, this one sent me this gift but Ya Rabbi let me really just send a gift and shower upon their soul. And that becomes the immensity of the barakah that they're carrying is that all their idas and all their actions they gave as a gift to these souls so that they would be remembered at a much higher association. Because these are the secrets of tariqah and the secrets of their success. When people say, I don't know why, why you, you have so much barakah, why you have so much blessing because they enacted a system that was filled with immense blessings. And these are the blessings that safeguard us from immense difficulties that are now entering upon this earth. I said so many things may be appearing this year and Rajab it should be a, a very immense, immense occasion with all the things that are happening upon this earth. We pray that Allah give us istiqam and firmness and that the, these talks to be listened to and sit and meditate. That what Prophet wanted for us, oh my goodness a fire and that to take the fire. And don't think exactly a fire is, is going to show and is going to walk through a fire but the fire is an analogy of our life of every scary thing you see on television or CNN and news channels that's a fire, it's a fire, a fire. And Prophet is warning for us, walk through it with your faith and your certainty and don't run for their remedy. And don't, don't fear what they have to say but our fear and our trust and our power is in Allah And Allah's power and love is in the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad So when everyone's running for Allah, everyone's running for Allah, no, no, the only one who's going to reach Allah's hand is, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُبَيُّنَكَ إِنَّمَا يُبَيُّنَ Allah. Ya Allah, Allah's hand is on the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad That's why when the knot we said, oh when I heard this ayatul kareem I grabbed my life to be on the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad because I wanted the hand of Allah on me. So in this day of difficulty the teaching, I ought to move my hand on your hand and Allah saying my hand is on the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad run to take the hand of Prophet Alhamdulillah, Subhan Rabbi Ka Rabbil Izzat Amma Yasifoon Wa Salaam Ala Al Mursaleen Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Bi Hurmati Muhammad Al Mustafa Bi Siri Surat Al Fatiha